All right, now on this problem. Again, we're going to start using properties of, of equality. So this problem is asking us to solve for A. All right, so a couple tips that I like to look at is when I'm trying to solve for A, again, I like to pin it against the wall. That's telling me don't do anything moving it at all. I want to solve for that variable. So I'm going to circle A. What that's telling me is that's the variable I want to solve for. I'm not going to do anything to it. Now what we need to do is we need to look at our inverse operations and say, what is happening to our variable that's prevented from you know, being alone? Um, so you could say, well, right now my variable is being divided by 10. So when I think of inverse operations, remember addition is the opposite of subtraction. Well, the opposite of division is going to be multiplication. So you're going to want to multiply by 10. And I multiply by 10 over here. Now, again, this is really actually saying, if I was going to kind of continue this fraction over here, you could say this is 10 divided by 10. Well, that actually now goes to 1, which a lot of times we just say cancels out. So I'm left with A back over here. I can keep it circled, but it's alone now, so it's, it's good. And then, a lot of students run into trouble multiplying a whole number times a fraction. All right? When you have a whole number times a fraction, change your whole number into a fraction. Put it over 1. Then, as you remember, when we multiply fractions, you just multiply across. 2 times 10 is 20. 5 times 1 is 5. Well, 20 divided by 5 gives you 4. Okay, so that you can reduce your fraction. So that is how you um, solve for A by using uh, the multiplication property of equality. Yes, question? One more question. Um, what, like, in middle school, they said like, it was a negative. Like, like, what if it was negative? They also change the positive. Let me show you an example. Let me just go on and finish the video. I'll show you an example. 